All right, welcome back to C Programming Skills Using Replit. I'm Norman McIntyre. Let's continue on our food menu program. We're going to write some code now. We're going to focus on version 1. So we'll create this program through multiple versions, and we'll start here. We'll use this concept called stepwise refinement, which is how code gets written. That means step by step you continue to add to it, you continue to refine it, you continue to make it better. And this is how code goes from just an idea in someone's mind to a fully working program. Uh, you just keep repeating stepwise refinement over and over and over. So we're going to have many versions of this. This one, we're going to display a welcome message. And we'll also ask this question, would you like to see today's specials? And uh, if so, we'll show the, the specials. So you should follow along. I'm going to be using Replit like I always do. I would recommend create a brand new project. Notice I've created this project called uh, CPSUR, so the C Programming Skills using Replit-Food-Menu-Prog. And so I recommend you do that. Of course, we're using the C language. And go ahead and create. We see, see here the default Hello World program is a good place to start. So get that going. As always, you should follow along as I'm writing the code here in the video. You should be doing it in your browser and following every single step. All right, so here I am. I have uh, always click on Run and just have it say Hello World. And we know that gives us a starting point. Um, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to, as I often do, first comment what is it I want to do. I'm going to say I'm going to display uh, how about the program title and I'm going to display uh, well I'll say display the title uh, the version and the developer uh, all your programs we want you to put your name down so this will be the version and then the developer so we'll, we'll do all that and after we do that we will Oh, let's display welcome to the food uh, store, whatever this particular, you know, restaurant or fast food, whatever. We will then ask uh, if specials are displayed. So ask the user for that. And really for this version one, that's all we want to do at this point right this is our version one so like any project first give an idea of what it is you want to do I would say up here let's go ahead and do a pound define we know that this pound define is a command to the preprocessor where you can give a name for example version and a value will set it to one. We did this in previous videos. This is a good technique. It says, well, this is going to be version one of our program. When we, when it comes time to display the title, we could certainly put the code right here. But instead of putting the 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 code directly here, I'm gonna prefer to have a function. I'm gonna say, oh, let's call it display underscore title. So display title, and that's going to be a function. In other words, I can, and uh, if we were on a, 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 if this was a big project, and we were on a big team, someone else in the team could work on this, while yet another person is focused on how about display welcome. All right, those are two different functions, and different people could work on those course we haven't written these functions uh, what we're going to do and this is important for now we'll go into more detail later in the course but for right now before you call a function as we're doing it here you need to declare what that function is before it's used so this display title uh, this is going to be a function in fact you may just want to copy and paste right here so you make sure you don't have any typos. And we know that for a function, you first tell what does it return. Well, this is going to return nothing, which is void. 
void means this function does not return anything. The function has a name. And then inside the parentheses, you give it any inputs that are being passed into the function. And we don't have any. And then we just do the open and close curly brace, knowing our code will go in there. Of course, as soon as we did that, this went away. Right? We don't have that error now. And I would do the same thing with display welcome. Let's put it right here. Same type thing. I could say, well, you know what? This is going to be a void and display welcome. Nothing goes in. So just open close parentheses. And we have that. And of course, this one went away. And then we have this one here say, ask about specials. I'll just call this ask about specials. All right, and notice I'm, I'm delaying <laughs> as much as possible actually doing the work. I'm just saying, you know, somebody else can worry about that. I know I need to ask about the specials, but I'm not going to implement it right now. I'm just going to put a framework in place so we know this also is not going to return anything. And we're just going to put, put all that in there. Now I recommend, as you type in your code, click on Run every now and then, just to make sure you don't have any errors. Of course, we're not displaying anything. We just got, you could think of this like a framework of a house. We haven't yet put up any walls or anything. We just got some, some framework in place. But it, it kind of tells us what we want it to do. So now we can come in and start doing some things. So let's say, okay, display the title. Um, we could even do this, I think, for the purpose of demonstration. I'm going to do this. Um, actually, let's, let's do a trick. This is kind of good to know. I'm going to say to do percent %s backslash n. And watch this carefully. Underscore, underscore, function, underscore, underscore. And watch when I run this. It says to do display title. This is a pretty cool trick because while you're putting your code together, you could actually copy this line six and paste it in these two other places here and click on run. And notice it this this is a special uh, name that the compiler will always fill in the name of the function. So I actually do this a lot when I'm working on projects because it gives you your to-do list and it tells you which function you still need to do some work in. So pretty cool trick. And then, of course, when it comes time to implement it, you can just comment out your to-do. You can say, well, let's display the title. So we'll say printf. So print function. Oh, let's call it the food menu program and maybe we'll put a backslash in there for a new line maybe we say printf uh, version percent %d because we're going to put a decimal place there and of course we would say version now remember you can pause the video at any time if something doesn't make sense uh, you can rewind it, play it multiple times. You can actually slow the video up or speed it up, depending on your needs. And very importantly, always put pride in what you're doing. So say code by and put your name. All right, put your name there. So you'll be proud that you wrote this code. And that's um, basically the, the title, all the information and you could click on run and there you go got your food menu program version one code by your name and of course the nice thing of this we see we've got two other to do's uh, for the welcome I'll say uh, let's do a put string on this one we'll say welcome to our new online ordering system And maybe that's all we do, right? Maybe we just say that's that's all we want to do right now. Welcome to our new online ordering system. And then we say, all right, time to look at 
the specials. So we'll do this. We'll say print F. Do you want to see today's specials? Backslash. And instead of putting a backslash in, we'll just put the prompt there. And now we're at this point, we want to see what the user enters. And so we'll say the specials, we'll put in parentheses, they can enter either a yes or a, a Y or an N. And since we're learning about this, let's say, well, they're going to read in an integer, we'll just call it C. And let's call this get char. And notice as I type get char, we've used this in one of the other videos, it says it will get a character and it'll return that character as an integer. So we'll have this right there. And for debug purposes, we might say, ju just to make sure this is working like we think it is, we'll say printf c percent c, since it's a character, and print the value of c there. And maybe that's all we do right now. So we click on run. Do you want to see today's specials? Well, let's say you press the letter Y. Cool. We see we've got a Y. Let's run it again. Let's say I press N. Hey, we've got an N. Let's do it again. Let's say I press the number, uh, just uh, the D. So it picks up D. So that's good. We've, we've got the character there. I would recommend you can just comment this out once you verify that works like you you think it is. Or you could say for the purpose of since we are learning this, you, you can even just keep it there for this. Yeah, I'll, I'll leave that up to you. Um, but here's the important thing. We want to say if C, right, this character, if it is exactly equal, so here's one of our relational operators. If it's exactly equal to and notice I'm going to put in single quotes a Y. Open and close curly braces. So if C is exactly equal to this, then we'll say put string. Here are today's specials. And we won't worry about putting any specials there, but we know it would, it would display them if, if that's the case. Otherwise, it would not. So let's run this. Do you want to see today's specials? Yes, I do. Okay, here are today's specials. Well, let me run it again. Uh, no, I do not. So we've got a no. So we've got it. And, and of course, somebody could say, well, wait a minute. Suppose I have someone that's going to type a capital Y. Suppose somebody's cap lock is on. And although they said capital Y, maybe you would like to handle that as well, right? Maybe you want to say, you know what, even if they type in lowercase or uppercase, um, I'm, I'm going to, to handle that. So we could say, well, if C is exactly equal to this, or if C is exactly equal to capital Y. Ah, so here we've got a logical operator. If it is lowercase y or if it's uppercase y, we will display the specials. So here's my lowercase. That still works as I expected. Here's my uppercase. That still works as expected. So this is nice because we get to see an example of using relational operators to see if things are equal. And we also are using our logical operators saying if either one of these are true. And I would say for this version one, this is it. We got, you know, our, our version one there. And uh, actually, it looks like I typed in multiple characters there. But in any case, we've got our version one. So for this part of the video, make sure your code is working as I, I have it here. And once you've got it working, then you'll be ready to move on to the next video. We're making it this far. 
and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video where we'll cover version 2 and add additional functionality to our food menu program. I'm Norman McIntyre. Thanks as always for watching.